And it's dead here, and then the uh, engine lab. Today I wanted to go over how governors work on diesel engines. There's really not a lot of good videos out there um, on how they work, so I wanted to go over the basic principles of how a governor works. I've got a nice little D3 here, teardown. Um, I have the linkage and the throttle lever and the shutdown lever linkage here to go over. So we're gonna kind of go over how this works and the functionality of how a governor works and how flyweights work and how engine speed affects that. So let's get started. Okay, so the first principle is the governor and the shaft that rides on the camshaft. So if you have a camshaft inside of an injection pump, it's driven by a gear and that gear is driven by another gear which is driven by the crankshaft. I've taken that off so it's easy to see how this functions. So what we have is we have this gear and inside the engine is the camshaft as you can see in there for the injection pump. So those are the cam lobes that are going to fire the injection pump plungers or push them up and that is going to inject fuel up to the injectors, raise the fuel pressure above the injector fuel pressure spring and then fuel will be injected into the cylinders. So the first part of this to really look at is that you might have heard the term flyweights and flyweights is a generic term that's used in distributors as well as it's used in injection pumps. So in this particular engine, there's this little button, and basically what is a little piece of plastic, and it has a little flat roller that's gonna self-center, it's gonna sit on a piece of metal. And that metal is inside that housing, and I'll show you that in a minute. It has a guide, and that guide prevents this from rotating. So when I put this on here, all right, now what I have is I have these flyweights. So these flyweights have, uh, fulcrum point, so they have a hinge point, and that basically allows those to push this button out. So as you can see, if I roll these out, it pushes the buttons out. So basically, as we start the engine up and we run the engine, what's gonna happen is centrifugal force is gonna take over, and the top portion of these flyweights is going to try to pull them out. So Centrifugal force will make these rotate out, all of them at the same time. That is gonna push this button out. So that is depending on the force of the flyweights is directly proportional to the speed of the engine. At idle, there is not a lot of centrifugal force. So the button's not gonna be held out much. So the faster that the engine rotates, the stronger the centrifugal force, which will put that button out. And remember at idle, this is not spinning real fast, so there won't be as much centrifugal force. When we speed the engine up, obviously there will be more centrifugal force, which will try to restrict the quantity of fuel. So that basically, if you're in a full throttle position with no load on the engine in neutral, these the engine will speed up to the point where that will push this button out, which will counteract the fuel, and that will limit engine speed at full RPM. So no load governs speed. This determines what the no load governs speed is. So let's look how that works. So what we have is we have this assembly here, and this assembly is where that button rides. That button rides right inside the housing here. So it rides on that, basically the center of that plate. So with that button riding on that plate, what we're gonna have is we're gonna have this lever here. So this long lever attaches to the injection pump and that is going to increase or decrease the quantity of fuel that the injection pump is going to deliver to the engine. So that's what this link rod attaches to. So that goes through the housing here and attaches to the Pump. So when I slide this into the engine, as such, then I would have that attached to the injection pump inside here. So that's going to move back and forth, and you can kind of see the lever on the throttle moves with it. So let's go a little further deep into how this kind of works. 
Okay, so here's the lever that's going to control the injection pump. And that button from the flyweights is going to push on this plate. And that directly will restrict the quantity of fuel or allow it to increase. Now you have your throttle lever here and you have your shutdown lever here. So when this is in the assembled position, my, thro my shutdown lever is going to sit like this. So when I put the, sh the shutdown lever into position, that is going to allow me to pull the fuel back to the no fuel delivery position. So when I go to shut the engine down, this lever here is going to pull that to the off position or zero fuel delivery. So inside the pump, what happens is the fuel is actually being recirculated from the inlet side of the injection pump to the return side. So what that lever does is when we pull the fuel all the way down, it opens the passageway from the fuel inlet to the return. So no fuel is going to be compressed in the plungers in the pump. So the individual plungers, the fuel can be pushed in by the lift pump into the plunger body. But as the plunger tries to compress the fuel, that then goes out the return back to the tank. That's the shut off position of the fuel. That's how you shut the diesel engine off. Now, there's a lot of levers and, you know, linkage here. So let's kind of look at that a little bit. It's a little complex, but if we look at the throttle lever, we have the throttle lever here and the throttle lever has a stop on one side and it has a stop on the other side. And if we look inside, we can see that there's a pretty decent sized spring down in here and that spring is attached to that lever and this plate that the button rides on so if i hold the plate down i can pull this up and that spring is going to pull that plate up so on one side of the equation you have the flyweights and the button pushing on this plate trying to hold it shut which is pulling the fuel delivery back to a low position. On the other side, what I have is I have my throttle linkage, and my throttle linkage has a idle stop position. So my idle stop position is set right here. So in the idle stop position, I have adjusted the tension on that spring to maintain fuel delivery at the desired RPM. That's what that big spring's going to do. Now, as I increase the RPM of the engine, let's say I'm in neutral, and I throw the throttle all the way forward, which is going to drive that link rod here and advance the fuel to the fuel, fuel full fuel position. So as I move this lever forward, I'm going to push this lever, which is going to increase fuel delivery. Now in the other equation here, remember, there's no load. I have this stop here. That's my maximum RPM stop right here. So I'm going to set that at my no load full RPM. Basically what's going to happen is this is going to go all the way to the fuel fuel position. The RPM of the engine is going to go up, up, up. And then what's going to happen is those fly weights are going to start to push that button out. Now what that button is, like my finger, is going to push on that plate and it's going to pull that lever back. So you can see that I can overcome this lever with my finger and retract the fuel delivery against that large spring. So basically you have this large spring which is going to be overcome by your centrifugal force of your flyweights. Now you've also got the little concept of we have to have some way to prevent the fuel from fluctuating a lot and that's what there's a fine spring down in here so, the, so now what I have is I have a couple of more springs in here so I have one spring down here at the hinge point which holds this lever in position holds it into position so that it doesn't flop around in the injection pump and then I have this idle return spring which basically is going to keep that from going fully down to the off position. So when I shut the shutdown lever off and I shut the engine off, that's going to hold the 
fuel lever to the off position. So I'm gonna hold that in the off position and that's gonna shut the engine off. Now when I let that go, this spring here is going to return the engine to the idle position. So you can see that it's holding it in the off position. And then of course you have the fly weights are going to be spinning. So then of course you've got the fly weights pushing on the button. So there's this little counteraction between the button and the fly weights and that spring at idle. And then you have obviously, you have if the fly weights are pushing the fuel down too much, which they will be, then we have the throttle linkage and we have our idle speed stop right here. So that's gonna hold that to the idle speed RPM. So you adjust that one. So there's the balancing act between the fly weights and the button pushing down on here, the spring here for idle, and then your high speed RPM spring when you start to overcome the button. So remember the fly weights have a pretty good force trying to hold that down. So I hope that you understand a little better about the mechanism of the fly weights and the button pushing on a lever against the spring tension and then a lever and a spring overcoming that, being able to increase the fuel. So that's why we have a throttle lever, we have a stop lever um, in injection pumps and what the mechanical fly weights look like. So from my shutdown lever, I have the end of it's gonna rest on the frame here. So there's a little space, it doesn't move very much to overcome shutting the fuel delivery off here. So when I put this back together, then I have my shutdown lever. I can get it the rest of the way on. There we go. So I have my shutdown lever and I, then I have my throttle linkage, which is going to overcome the governor. So the governor is pushing the fuel lever back in the throttle and I'm gonna hold that fuel lever back and then I can overcome that fuel lever tension of the governor fly weights pushing the button out with my throttle linkage. I'm gonna actually pull that spring which is gonna push that plate up. So that spring is very important, the tension of that spring. The small spring is in here for retaining the tension at idle RPM and the spring that holds that lever into the injection pump in the right position. That's also important. So I hope this you know video explains a little bit more about fly weights, the RPM of the engine holding back against the fuel lever, and then you being able to overcome that tension. So RPM is directly related to the speed of the engine, the fly weight force, the button, the spring holding that to that idle position and then when you raise the rpm up with no load on the engine the rpm of the engine speeds up the fly weights come out they push the button in and that holds back the fuel against that spring tension of your throttle lever so i hope you understand how governors work a little better through this video uh, if you like the video please subscribe hit the like button and i'll see you soon